Well, hello there. Old Man Kelly here. How you doing today? A couple weeks ago, I showed you my process for brewing beer. And today, I thought I'd show you my, press, my process for bottling beer. And as you watch this, it's, it's just the highlights. I want, I want you to keep in mind that everything I use here, the tubing, my hands, stirring implements, bowls, whatever I use, the bottles, the caps, they've, they've all been, been soaking in a sanitizing solution. So everything that the beer touches has been sanitized. Anyway, that being said, let's watch my little film. All right, those are my bins of beer bottles that I collect over the time. Whenever I go out and people drink good imported beer, I save the bottles. And they've already been washed out when I first got them, scrubbed out with hot soapy water. Now I'm pretty much just rinsing them out, making sure that any dust or whatever that might have got in there is uh, cleaned out. I got to pretty much scrub out every beer bottle and rinse it out. There'll be 50 clean beer bottles when I get done, but you got to take time to enjoy a, a little brew. This is Two Brothers Heavy Handed that I'm pouring here. What's the point of brewing beer if you're not going to enjoy beer? Mmm, beer. So I continue washing out. This is the most tedious process of, of, of doing the beer is getting all these bottles nice and clean. For those of you who don't know, the key to making good tasting beer is cleanliness. The cleaner things are, the better the beer will... Uh-oh, wait a minute. Somebody's hungry. Little Amanda's wondering where her dinner is, but too bad. I'm making beer, Amanda. You're going to have to wait. Like I was saying, if you ever make beer, number one rule, clean. Clean everything. You sanitize countertops, hands, water, parts, anything that touches the beer that might... Oh, there it is. 50 clean beer bottles. They aren't sanitized yet, they will be. And that's what I use to sanitize them. So that sink is filled with a sanitizing solution. And everything will go in there. And these tubes, I'll fill up with sanitizing solution. There's my bucket I'll use for bottling. You see I'm putting sanitized solution in there and I'll swish it all around. Now this is the priming sugar I'm doing here. I'm putting about three quarters of a cup of priming sugar in with some boiling water. And I'll let this boil and it'll sterilized by boiling and we'll come back to what that sugar does later there's the bottle caps I'll be using and you see I got all the bottle caps soaking in a sanitizing solution make sure they're nice and clean and there's our beer well it's not really beer yet but it it will would get you drunk if you dr drank it but there's no carbonation yet carbonation will happen inside the beer bottle so one of the first things you do when you open it up is give it a nice sniff. Make sure it smells like beer, and this obviously does. That's what it looks like. All that garbage around the outside, and there's a lot on the bottom too. That's all the waste from the, the yeast, the dead yeast, the, maybe the hops it collected. And now it's time to pour the priming sugar into the beer solution. What this will do is it'll cause a... This is what you need for carbonation. The yeast that's still alive will eat the sugar and produce carbon dioxide, which will be natural carbonation. Most beers you buy today are artificially carbonated. Carbon dioxide is injected into the beer, where homebrew is naturally carbonated. Now I'm trying to get the last out, trying to avoid any of that icky stuff that's around. You don't want to bring that in there. You're just trying to get the pure, what's going to be beer, into that bottom bucket. And I get as, I'll get as much as I can. I won't get too close. When it gets looks like I might start sucking up some of that goo on the bottom. I'll stop right there. And now the beer bottles are going into the sanitizing solution. All 50 beers will soak in here. It takes about a minute or a minute and a half to really sanitize them. So I have to go in and make sure each bottle's filled with the sanitizing solution. And once they're sanitized, I drop, they go into this rack. Now this is a nice rack because it keeps the beer bottles upside down and nothing that the beers, like the inside of the bottle is going to get contaminated and the, the top's not going to get contaminated. The rack only touches the outside of the bottle. And this rack as well has been sanitized just to be safe. Yeah, it holds 24 beer bottles, so I'll fill this rack twice, basically. Because a batch of 5 gallons pretty much makes 48 beers. Now I do this on the floor because uh, it makes it easier. And this is a, called the bottle filling wand. 
It's pretty nice. You put it in there, it's got a little thing at the end, so once it touches the bottom of the beer bottle, it begins to fill the beer. When it reaches the top, the very top of the beer bottle, you pull the wand back out, and because the wand's being pulled out, the beer, it leaves just enough room at the top of the beer for a, for a good fill to the beer bottle. It won't be right to the top. It'll be like the beers you buy in the store with about like an inch or so at the top, not filled. And again, I'm going to do this to all 50 beers. Okay, when we finish getting these four bottles filled, then I'll put caps on the top of them out of the sanitizing solution there. And then, of course, it goes to let's seal them up. I have to go get the uh, capping thing. And I had this soaking in the sanitizing solution, though it's really not necessary because it's not really touching anything inside the beer, but better safe than sorry. And now here's a close-up of the filling of a beer. You can see how I'll take it right to the very top. Dun, dun, dun. And right when it reaches the top, I pull the wand out and it drops back down to, a, to about the perfect uh, filling height. Now one thing we try to do when you're, when you're brewing beer is tr avoid getting any oxygen into the beer. That's bad at this point. And we'll keep going, you see I'm getting farther and farther, filling beers, capping beers, filling beers, capping beers, and of course, putting them into the racks. And I'll repeat this process over and over and over till all, in this, this batch I got uh, 49 beers filled. Well, thank you for watching. Um, now I just got, you know, got to wait uh, six weeks for this beer to mature and for the carbonation to build up, and hopefully I'll have a nice, tasty brew. It's an experimental brew, and I'm hoping it turns out well, because it's for a party, so... If it turns out not so good, well, people will have to deal, right? Anyway, thank you for joining me. We'll be back uh, next week with something. Something, I don't know. Bye.